everybody, I'm Sarah from SewingWithSarah.com. Uh, if you can hear me, say hi so that I know that uh, you, you can see me. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do the Brassy Joggers by Green Style Creations. Um, this is one of my favorite patterns. I think it might be my most used pattern. I've made my seventh pair today and this is going to be my eighth. So um, let's get started. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do, um, I'm going to be using this uh, Knit Pop Yoga Knit um, and this is you know, a really excellent fabric for it. So one of the first things that I'm gonna do here is I get ready to cut. I have my pattern pieces all traced out and I'm gonna be sewing these exactly per the pattern. I have a lot of hacks that I put up on my blog this week um, for how to change the pockets, um, how to add things to the pattern, but today I'm just gonna sew it kind of straight out of the envelope for you um, with just one teeny little tiny modification to the legs. So other than that, I'm just gonna sew them up exactly as they're written so that you can see how that works. Um, let me make sure I have you guys up here on my computer so that you can, I can ask questions or I can answer questions. Okay, so one of the first things I wanna talk about is the grain line on knits. Um, this is something where, you know, if you're working with a woven, it's pretty straightforward. But on a knit, um, you're gonna to need to find the grain line before you cut or they're gonna get all twisty on your leg. So what I do, and if we can kind of zoom in on this, I kind of pinch the fabric here. Um, and you can see that there are little ribs, okay? And so you want, um, to make sure that you're doing it, you know, where the stretch is going this way. And you want those ribs to be lined up. So what I do is I just kind of pinch it all the way down and make sure that I'm going along one rib, um, one rib of the fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay them out. There's a cutting diagram in the pattern, but because I don't usually have enough space to lay out every single piece, I often will just do a partial fold and then another fold as I run out of room. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is on the grain here. This kind of has a subtle stripe, but their stripes are really tiny, so I'm not gonna worry too much about lining that up. So I've got, um, this is the back, so I'm gonna place the back on here. And again, you want the stretch going this way across the leg so that it stretches around your leg. And then I'm gonna get the front. Um, now I've traced off my pattern pieces to be about one and a half inches shorter than the shorts cut line on the pattern. That's just personal preference. You know, if you like having your shorts be a little bit longer, you can just follow the way the pattern's written. Um, I like this length. It just feels like a good length for summer for me. So I've got those laid out. Um, I'm also gonna need a pocket piece I think I have enough kind of room here to lay that out as well. And then the waistband. Um, now the waistband excuse me, needs to be cut on the fold. So if I put it right here, it wouldn't be long enough. So I'm gonna wait and refold um, my fabric and cut that. Um, I cut everything with a rotary cutter. Um, I just find that it's more accurate. You certainly don't have to, um, but that's what works for me. And then I have these pattern weights, kind of giant washers, and then I have some um, little kind of bean, bean bag things here that I use as well. Um, so that's what I typically use for my pattern weights. So I'm just gonna weight that piece down, make sure that it's right on the grain line, and cut it out. Now, I did say that I was gonna make one modification. The only modification I'm gonna make is that I'm gonna angle it a little bit less on this inner leg. So instead of cutting right along here like you would for the pants, I'm just gonna angle it out just a little bit, maybe like half an inch on the inner leg, okay? So the outer leg is gonna be cut the same as usual. And go around here. Okay, so now we have the back cut out. Try not to waste any of my precious yoga knit here. Mm -hmm. Now here's the front. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that out. There's the um, center front crotch seam and then there's this pocket edge. So just gonna again, 
on this inner leg seam, I'm gonna just angle it a little bit less, just like I did for the back. That just gives your legs a little bit of extra kind of breathing room on the inner leg. Nobody likes to be sweaty in the summer and have their clothes sticking to them. So it's gonna help with that. Now you'll notice that the pattern has this line here for where you're supposed to stitch your pocket. You can trace this line on your fabric. Um, the only downside of that is you have to make sure that whatever you're tracing with doesn't leave a permanent mark. Like I've had bad experiences with chalk, um, but I'm gonna show you a different way. I tend to do it by feel um, and with some wash away wonder tape. So I'll kind of show you how that goes, but I'm not going to mark that, but you can if you want to. Um, then I need to cut a pocket piece, two of them to be exact. And I have a pocket hack on my blog that shows you another way to do a pocket if you don't want to have that top stitching on the outside. But again, I'm just cutting these according to the pattern. And like I said, I'm going to need to go ahead and refold for my waistband. The only other thing I do on here is I tend to clip, you can zoom on in on this, I tend to clip a tiny little notch here. You don't want to go too deep, but maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter, um, just to show me where my pocket's going to line up here, and then show me where my pocket's going to line up on that edge. And that just helps me later on when I'm trying to line them up. So, just gonna take all these pieces out, put them to the side, and cut my waistband. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, everybody. Starting looking at some of your comments. Hacky sacks, <laughs> Cynthia. No, but, you know, I was never very good at hacky sacks, but, um, you can certainly use them for that. They're a little heavy though, so if you miss, that might hurt. Okay, so we've got the front, the back, the pockets. Sometimes the rotary cutter doesn't quite cut 100% all the way through. Okay, so now I've got these extra little scraps that I like to cut off and toss. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to do the waistband. Fold it in half. Again, you want the stretch going in the direction that it'll be going around your body. This fabric's pretty stretchy, so you can probably get away with it either way, but it's just good form. Okay, so cut it on the fold. I'm gonna make sure that I'm far enough away from my previous cuts here. Okay, that looks like it'll be good. Okay, so this has a bunch of lines on it as well. It kind of has a, a halfway line. I have it upside down. Um, let me flip that over so you can see it better. It has a line that shows the fold line because you're going to fold it in half, and it also shows a stitching line here. Um, for the sake of time, I just don't usually tend to mark those lines. What I do do is I measure, um, can you zoom in on this? How far from one edge that stitching line is. So there's the stitching line here. Um, it's just about one and a half inches. So when you fold your fabric and you go to stitch that casing, that's helpful to know that it's one and a half inches. Um, I do mark the grommet hole, and I've had a couple of people ask for a little bit more in depth instruction on how I do my grommets, so I will definitely do that. But that's the part that I mark. When you're marking your grommet hole, you can do it in something really permanent, like a Sharpie, because you're gonna put a grommet through it. Um, I'm gonna find something that's gonna show up on this fabric. If I marked in chalk, I could do that. Something like this, see if that marks well. That's just my iron. It likes to beep when it's turning itself out. but that doesn't really make very well, nice of a mark. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie and make a mark on my fabric. 
And then, so I can clearly see where my grommet hole is gonna go. And then I'm gonna refold it perfectly because you want your grommets to be in the right place. And I'm gonna mark the other side. Just flip this over though. So the other grommet hole is right here on this other side. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark right there. Okay, so now I know exactly where my grommets are gonna go. That's my very high tech marking tool. I know about where I'm gonna stitch for my waistband casing. And then I can kind of clear off this table here make it a little bit more space. Okay, so the first thing that the pattern calls for is to turn down your pocket edge. You wanna be sure to note which is your pocket edge and which is your kind of center front crotch seam. The crotch seam drops lower, the cr uh, pocket edge is a little bit higher. Um, and so you're gonna be turning that down one half of an inch what I find really helpful is to use this knit stay tape, both to mark the line where I'm gonna fold and to stabilize where I'm going to stitch. And I've linked this in my blog post on supplies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna iron it down so that when I turn this pocket edge over, one half of an inch, it's hidden in there and then I can stitch on top without my machine stretching it off. So I'm gonna go over here to the iron. The other thing that you could do if you're having trouble getting a nice, even curve there for folding it down. Um, this stuff's a little tricky in finding the, is to run a basting stitch right along that half inch mark where you're going to sew using your sewing machine. Um, and sometimes that's helpful as well. So I'm just gonna get out my seam gauge here so that I'm accurate. In real life, I'm not this accurate. I just kind of make it work. But I'm trying to be accurate here. Okay. Yep. This stuff's a little tricky. Sometimes you can't tell which side is the side that's supposed to stick down. So that was not the right side. That should be right. See how I just kind of curve it there. You can step back just a little bit. So just press that on to the wrong side of your fabric. Make sure that it's not going anywhere. I'm going to snip off the extra. And then I can turn that edge over to the wrong side and it gives you, like I said, a little bit of a guide. Some knits just don't press really well. Um, this yoga knit, you know, doesn't have a lot of cotton or any cotton in it, so it's not going to press quite as stiffly, but if you use a little bit of steam, you can usually get a decent press there. What temperature do you use? Um, I'm using a silk setting. You could use a synthetic setting since technically this fabric is a synthetic, but I found that this does not hurt my yoga knit. Um, and it seems to be all right. So I'm just gonna do this to the other leg as well. And it's a little tricky, which is the wrong side, which is the right side of this stuff is up to, up to you, but this looks like it's the wrong side, so. I'm gonna make sure that I do the pocket edge instead of the other edge. Iron that down again. And you could use regular interfacing if you don't have this. The key is just to keep it from getting stretched out, um, especially if you're using a sewing machine to do your top stitching instead of a cover stitch. A cover stitch is gonna have some differential feed, so it's gonna be just fine. It's not gonna stretch out your fabric. But my cover stitch tends to be a little moody. So things like this make me nervous with it. So I tend to just use my sewing machine and use one of the decorative stitches on my sewing machine. 
So again, just folding this under about half an inch. When I first started sewing, I took all directions very, very literally, which is a good thing to do if you're new. Um, but as time goes on, you kind of learn where you can be flexible. So now I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine. And so a stitch along that edge, I'm gonna find a nice cool decorative stitch to use. Can you zoom in on this? I like to use this 2-08 one right here. I think it looks cool. Um, so just gonna make sure that edge isn't too... And of course I'm using a stretch needle here. I'm just gonna thread it first, that's important, right? The seam allowances on this pattern are 3 eighths of an inch, so you want to make sure that you're starting close enough to the edge that your pocket stitching isn't going to be caught. Yeah, Julie, the other piece is going to be like a mirror image, so you can kind of see a close-up of that. Um, so if I come over here and show you the other piece on the table, you can see how they're, hopefully, <laughs> mirror images of each other. So the pocket edge is going to be, you know, if you have them both right side up facing each other, that's how you know you did it right. Um, so I'm going to go back and... Do the same thing on the other side. Let me see. Thanks, Jamie. I do. I do like my sewing machine. Um, I call her Ashley. It's a lower Ashley sewing machine. I think it helps to name your name your machines. Um, so again, just kind of do that same thing along the edge. Sometimes I have kind of a lead foot and I tend to go too fast. That usually backfires. But so fun. So this stitch is essentially kind of a, a mock cover stitch. So I'm just going to make sure that it doesn't get pulled under too far there. If you feel like your knits are getting stretched out, you can use a walking foot. Um, I don't usually because I'm not doing a ton of top stitching, but certainly an option. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and press it. Now you can see that because, can you zoom in on that? You can see that because I used that interfacing, it's not wavy, it's not stretched out, it's not kind of ripply. If you don't use interfacing or some sort of stay tape on there, that's what's gonna happen, is it's gonna get kind of stretched out by your sewing machine uh, because you're using stretchy fabric and it's gonna stretch it as it sews. So that's kind of the positives and negatives of, of that. Um, now I do tend to kind of look on the back, check, see how it does. If you have too much extra fabric, just trim it off. It's not a big deal. Okay, so next we're gonna do the pockets. Have my pocket piece here. Now this part can kind of be tricky for people. Um, so the straight edge 
is going to go along the outside of your shorts. So remember when I notched as I was cutting out? That notch is going right here along the edge of the pocket. So that's why I like doing that. And then the other notch should be right here, right up where the top of the pocket should be. You know, you can kind of do a little bit of smoothing there. All right, so how are you gonna know where to stitch? How are you gonna keep it from staying down? Well, you could put a million and two pins in there. Um, that's definitely an option, and if you're comfortable doing that, you should. Um, the other option is to use one of my favorite things, Wash Away Wonder Tape. This stuff is awesome. Um, basically, it washes away um, after you, you know, so it's just gonna wash right away. So what I do, it does not really bend, so it works best in small pieces or in straight edges. It also kind of has an effect of stabilizing your fabric a little bit. So that kind of helps with the stretching out as well. Um, there's also kind of a steam -a seam product that I've heard people mention using. Um, the idea is, is that it's just kind of helping hold it in place. I buy this on Amazon, and again, the links to these supplies that I like to use are all in my blog post on supplies. Uh, if you go to my website and click sew along, you can see the series. So you just peel off the paper backing. Sometimes it can be kind of finicky, but it's being nice to me right now. And then go back and line it up again. Right at those notches. Okay, line that one up. Okay. And this stuff you can kind of unpeel it and re-stick it if you need to. Got a little bunchy there. I need to go through from the back and unbunch it. But you can see kind of how that works. Now it's not going anywhere, but how do you know where to stitch? Well, again, you could use pens, you could chalk mark it, but if you feel the edge of your fabric, straighten that out a tad. If you feel the edge of your fabric, you can feel the ridge where the pocket is. And so I just like to do it by feel. So that's what I'm gonna do, is I just kinda use my finger to guide. So let's go back over to the sewing machine. And I'm gonna feel where the edge of that fabric is. It's right here. Okay, so it's right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching that with my decorative stitch. to feel that it's it's curving a little bit it's gonna curve around here so I'm just curving with it Sometimes you can see a teeny tiny bit of waviness here. 
usually a little steam. Good press will get rid of that. And then, since we're being honest with each other, I'll flip it over. You can see, you know, I have a little bit of extra room here. I could have gotten a little closer to the edge, but it's really okay. Um, and you can always trim that off if that bothers you. So go back here, do it again. Um, so yeah, some people are using tracing paper. That's another good method if you want to mark that pocket line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this to the other side. So you see I have to flip that over. Okay, I've got about where I'm going to mark it, where I'm going to set it, put it down. I wash away window tape for that. This is by far the most challenging part of these shorts. If you can get through this part, you are golden. Um, it's all downhill from here. So I know that this is the part that intimidated me most at first when I first started sewing them. So I just wanted to get this exactly right. Peel off that paper backing again. Feel free to ask questions too as we go along. I'll try to see them. Um, sometimes it's hard in the feed to see at the same time, but hopefully I'll be able to answer as we go along if you have specific kind of questions or areas where you've struggled in making these or things that you just can't picture. Okay, so my teeny tiny little line is there. Oh, I just stepped on a pin. Uh-oh. Sewing room hazard. Sorry, oh, honey. It's, nope, it's a sewing needle. Oh, oh mother. Sorry. <laughs> this is a definitely a, a hazardous location. Sorry. The blog is sewingwithsarah.com. Is someone asking? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's www.sewingwithsarah.com. And if you click at the top right um, under the categories, it'll say... Um, there's sew along category, there's a sew along category. There's also a brassy tag that I put on all my brassies, so you can also take a look at that too. Um, yeah, I'd love for you to take a look. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back. I put stuck it down with wash away wonder tape. I know you were all distracted by my husband getting a hole through the, his foot, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and go sew that edge down the same way that I did before. Um, except I'm gonna start along the bottom edge this time, because that's just easier for me keep my presser foot on the same side. So before I start from the top, now I'm gonna start from the bottom. So that decorative stitch. That was definitely helpful if you let me know that they're asking specific questions like that. Thank you. So I'm going around that corner now using my finger to feel the edge, my pointer finger is right at that edge. I need to turn a little bit. It really did pretty good. The wash away wonder tape helped stabilize it a little bit. It's just going to wash away. So you can see you've created a pocket. Now it's still open along these edges. So what you can do is you can run a basting stitch, which is a stitch that's really long in length and does not back stitch. 
um, along those edges just so you don't have to worry about it when it comes to sewing them together. I find that it's most important along the waist um, because when you go to put that waistband on, you're gonna be stretching it a little bit and you don't want your pocket to get kind of stretched out. Um, the other type of pocket that I showed you is this type of pocket. Could you zoom in on this pocket? So this one, this is a pair of brassy that I made today. They are not top stitched, so there's no top stitching here. I showed you how to hack the pattern to make a facing. So instead it's just got like that pocket bag in there with the seams on the inside. Um, that's another way of doing the pocket. Um, that's a little bit different and the way that this pattern is made makes that alteration really easy. So you can find that on the blog if you're interested um, in how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and base that top edge. So I'm gonna go to my stitching. I'm gonna take off the back stitching. I'm gonna make it as long as it can go. So that's for me, that's a five, um, five millimeters. And I'm just gonna baste it closed um, at about quarter inch. You don't wanna have to take out the spacing. So if you keep it within the seam allowance, it makes your life easier later. And I just cut it. Again, I don't backstitch because this is not meant to hold it permanently. It's just meant to kind of keep that edge there. You could also base this edge. I don't find that really necessary. Um, so I'm not going to do that, but you can. So again, I'm going to come over here, base this edge. So now we've got our front pieces, yay! Okay, so we're kind of halfway there. Now we're gonna get our back pieces. Now there are a couple ways to do this. I actually do this a little bit different than they show in the pattern. Um, I didn't even realize that until today when I reviewed the pattern again. But um, there are a lot of ways to sew two legs together. Um, and they work. But what I like to do is I match the side of a front and a back. So I have a front and a back piece here. I'm going to pin it, match the side. I also like to use sewing clips. I have a whole jar of different sizes that I bought off Amazon. Um, I buy everything on Amazon. I used to buy groceries on Amazon, but my husband said I couldn't do it anymore. So now I make him go to the store for me. He's such a good guy. Uh, so I, I pin together that side seam. You got the big old back the smaller front, and then I pin together that inner seam. So again, the pattern has you do this a little bit differently. I like this method. Um, in the pattern, they have you put like put them flat and then sew the crotch seam and then sew the side seams. I find this to be efficient, which when you have three kids and you're sneaking in your sewing time, efficiency is good. So I'm gonna do that same thing with this other leg. It's another tip that I've noticed in terms of stitching as quickly as you can, as efficiently as you can, is that if you get both sides prepped before you go over to your serger, before you go over to your sewing machine, you're doing less back and forth. It doesn't seem like a lot, but every little back and forth trip you take across the room costs you time. So again, I could have based it along the pocket edge here, I didn't because, again, it's, it's not really stretched, so it doesn't have a tendency to come out of place, but if you're anxious about it, you can certainly base there within the seam allowance. So I've got two legs here, okay? So if I was putting them on, each one would go like this, and I'm gonna serge along this inner seam, along this outer seam on both of them at 3 8 of an inch. Come over here to my serger. If you don't have a serger, just use a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. Um, mostly, if you were doing this with a sewing machine, I would use this stitch, this 1-06. It's like a little lightning bolt. You can use a zigzag, but this tends to show through less. So that's what I would do if I was just using my sewing machine and I didn't have a serger. I like to have two sergers because then I can have one with light thread and one with dark thread and I don't have to re-thread as much. But that's definitely a luxury. So I'm going to Surge these. Do a little check here. My surged tension looks good. Doesn't look all wonky, so that's important. My front and my back line up. 
have my two needles threaded with a matching thread color. The other two, the loopers, are not threaded with a matching color because that's not going to th show through on the outside at all. If you really want it to match on the inside, you can rethread your serger every time, but I, again, try to find ways to save time. These are really short seams, so they don't need a lot of pens or even really any, any pens at all if you don't want to use them. Okay, so we got one leg done. I'm gonna just flip over here to the other leg. Now a couple people have mentioned that they want to make things a little bit bigger, that they feel like they, they just want a little bit more room in their shorts. You can size up. Um, you can use a smaller seam allowance. You might have to adjust your waistband if you're doing that. That's another option. room is my version of heaven. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. Um, I got this table as a Christmas present. Steven built it for me from Ikea pieces and uh, had a top that he made for it. Um, Shannon is asking how the brassies compare to the Mama Bear joggers. That's a great question. Uh, I have, I own but have not sewn the Mama Bear joggers, so I can't give you a really accurate answer to that in terms of fit. Um, I think that Brassies may have a, a few different options, but um, you know, I might have to do a little comparison post if you guys are interested. Um, I have sewn um, a couple of other, you know, shorts patterns, jogger patterns. Um, I really like the way these fit on me, which is one reason why I've made seven pairs, eight pairs after this one is done. Um, and each, but each one is unique, you know, and I'm a little bit of a pattern hoarder, so I have quite a few patterns and, and they're kind of like children, you know, I love them all for their unique characteristics. So, um, you know, there's just a lot of different, different things and, you know, if you guys are interested in kind of a head to head comparison, I can certainly do that. Um, but yeah, so I'm sorry I don't have a really direct answer to the question about the mama bear joggers. Erin um, asks, what is selfish fabric? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Erin. Um, selfish fabric. Hmm. I don't know. All my fabric is kind of selfish, I guess. No. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do here is I have one leg that I've turned right sides out. Um, and I have one leg that is still wrong sides out. I'm going to slide them inside each other. Right side out, wrong side out. I know this was kind of an area of confusion, so I want to try to go over it. And then slide them inside each other so that I'm matching up that inner leg seam. When you're doing that, you want to make sure that, if you can, that those seams line up perfectly. I like to line them up, one going one direction, one go the other direction, because I find that easier. Check, oh, there we go, perfect alignment. Hopefully it'll stay that way once I run it through the serger. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring them around. Just for fun, I'll use some clips instead of pins. So you're gonna have kind of like a U shape once you pin this together. Does that make sense? So here we go. Going from the waistband all the way down, around, back up to the waistband. What? What's your blog again? Oh, somebody asking? Yeah, they did. Oh, okay. Um, my blog is at www.sewingwithsarah.com. Sorry, I don't want this to sound like an advertisement, but apparently somebody asked, so. <laughs> um, and I will have this video embedded on my blog, hopefully as well. Okay, so after I'm done. So I've got this U shape here. So I'm going to surge all the way around. So one leg is right side out, one leg is right side in. I'm just going to surge all the way around. And then the magic when you turn them apart. Stay 
lined up here. Okay, here's that part where I pinned. I'm gonna take the pin out, as you do. Your pin with your serger. Make sure that the seam allowances stay exactly where I put them. Now, if you wanted to add a whole bunch of a uh, bunch of fancy top stitching, you could do that. I added that to my jean shorts pair, but. Um, I did not add that to this pair. This is more of an F. Okay. Oh, wow. You guys, see? You're, you, you guys have a better pattern collection than I do. I don't have the Halloween women's lounge pants either. Um, I would love to try those out too. Um, but I don't have those ones either. What I've, I've sewn the Rhapsody Joggers um, by Striped Swallow. I've sewn these. Um, and I've sewn the um, Portlanders, which are not technically a jogger, but kind of in that same genre. Um, but I have not sewn the Hala Lounge Pants, although, you know, I think it's Samantha. Is it Samantha who's the, the owner of Hala? Um, anyway, I'm here if you want to donate me a pattern. Um, is there a trick to keeping them lined up? Okay, so that's where, you mean that, that inner leg seam, that, the, where the crotch lines up? Okay, can you zoom in on that? It's really hard to see, but it's kind of a perfect little X there. I'm pretty proud of that right now. Mm, yeah, there we go. Um, so my trick is to push one seam allowance one direction and one seam allowance the other direction, and then to put a pin at exactly three-eighths of an inch where you're gonna surge and just check Peel it up and check to make sure it lines up. That's what I do, um, and that works pretty well. Um, sometimes it doesn't line up, but most of the time it does. So now you have something that starts to look like shorts. Hooray! Um, you can kind of see I, tur I turned them out. It's working out well. Um, the pattern encourages you to double stitch that seam, and if you stitch it with a sewing machine, I would definitely do that. The serger kind of has the effect of double stitching the seam. Um, I haven't split any crotch seams yet, but um, I'll let you know if I start doing some cartwheels and, and have a problem. Um, something else you know, that we've hacked in the sew along um, is to add back pockets. You can always do that. Again, I haven't done that on this pair, but I do really love me a good back pocket. So that's another thing to consider if you're, if you're hacking them. Um, so what's next? Okay, so now we have something that starts to resemble shorts. We're gonna tackle the waistband. That is where we're going to need to, first we're going to need to interface where we do our um, grommets. So I'm going to grab some interfacing. Okay, don't zoom in on my cupboard yet. Mm -hmm. It's not, <laughs> let's just say it's not quite as well organized as it could be. Um, so I, it's okay, you can watch. I'm just cutting off a piece of interfacing here. Very non-symmetrical way. And then I'm just gonna cut it. To... I use woven interfacing. I like the stuff from Fashion Sewing Supply. Um, a little bit goes a long way when it comes to this stuff. Okay, so got a square of interfacing there. Actually not quite big enough for both pieces. So I'm gonna cut it in half. That is gonna go over my grommet area. And the fabric is so similar on the right side and the wrong side. But that is the right side. I'm just gonna make sure that it goes over this right spot. I'm gonna go over and just press it on. It's usable interfacing, so. It's pretty much the only kind I use. I'm sure there's a use for sewing interfacing, but I don't know what it is. So I've got that positioned right. I check over here, that needs to go over here. Unless you're using, oops, a really thin fabric, this interfacing is not going to show through. So I don't care that it's not cut in a perfectly symmetrical rectangle. Just going to press it down. Just until it adheres, which for me tends to be about 20 seconds. My iron starts beeping at me if it's face down for 30. So, so lift it up, check and make sure it's not going to peel off. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, this 
is another thing that people seem curious about, is my grommet press. This is my grommet press. I bought it from, you can see the cam, I bought it from Cam Snaps. Amazon sells some similar ones. It's definitely a bit of an investment, um, but I really like it. It's a really quick and easy way to install grommets. Um, and I'll show you how I use it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just double check that my grommet holes are exactly kind of where they want them. They should be about an inch up. And then I'm gonna, I need to grab my scissors. This part's always a little scary. Snip a little hole in my fabric. Okay. You don't want it too big, of course, but. And then I'm gonna grab my grommets. This is the part that's gonna go on the outside. They also have little grommet hammers. I think that they sell like a Dritz kit that you can buy as well. Again, that's all linked in my blog post on supplies. Um, so if you go to the sew along tab at sewingwithsarah.com, you can check that out. There's a certain way these little topper things are supposed to go. So then, maybe if I turn it sideways, you'll be able to see it better. So I've got my grommet die in there. This can also do snaps, but I have it set up for doing grommets. And then just keep it lined up, get my little fingers out of the way. Boom. Let's do another one with it more zoomed out for the next one. Okay, so you can see, you can zoom in on that. See my grommet? It's a thing of beauty. Grommets are pretty satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna cut my next little hole here. You typically cut one direction and then the other. I bought a pack of 100, that's how they came. They tend to last for a long, long time. Although at the rate I'm going with brassies, I could run out. They come in different widths. I'm using seven millimeter grommets. Um, I, like, I like that width, that works for me. You could use like a five millimeter. I wouldn't go up, I also have, I think it's the 10 millimeter grommets. Those are giant, giant. Grommets. I would not go for the 10 millimeter grommets. The only time I've used those is like when I'm making like burlap signs or something. The thing I like about this is, you know, I don't have a ton of upper body strength, so this kind of is really easy to use. Um, and it's quiet. So there we are. There's my grommets. What size? What size grommets? Um, these are the 7 millimeter grommets. So 7 millimeters. If you want a comparison, let me grab my larger grommets. Okay. These are the 10 millimeter grommets. So the seven are these silver ones. These are the 10 millimeter grommets. They're kind of huge. You can see it like next to my finger for comparison. Um, so these are the seven millimeters that I've used. The 10 I think are just, are just too big. So I prefer the sevens. Um, I've noticed they also have them like on eBay and stuff too. So then I just put that away. That's it for my grommets. Okay. So I'm going to put those back. All right. So now we have our grommets installed. We're going to sew the short seam of our waistband. So we're going to fold it in half and sew right along here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. I don't even use a pin on this part. It's not a long enough seam to make that worthwhile for me. Okay. Pinch it at both ends. I really love 3 8 seam alignment. Okay. So, ah, look at that. I even managed to get some stripes lined up a little bit there. I love it when that happens by accident. Cut off my little serger tails. I'm gonna go to my iron, and I'm just gonna press the seam. It doesn't matter which side you press it to, but it gets all bulky in there if you don't make sure that it's pressed. So, then you're gonna fold it in half. If I had a fabric like cotton lycra that pressed really well, I'd go through and press this whole seam. Since I don't have a fabric that really likes to be pressed, it, it can be pressed, but it's not really great at being pressed. I'm just going to go through and pin it together 
I don't know, every four or five inches. I'm just checking to see if there are any. Oh, okay, what brand of grommet press? It's a Cam Snaps, Cam Snaps Grommet Press. Uh, and I ordered it from their website. Every once in a while they have specials. I think I ordered mine during a Labor Day special or during Memorial Day special or something like that. I think maybe they'll have a special for 4th of July. I know they have a newsletter, so I don't get any money from them by recommending them, but um, you can always sign up for their newsletter if you want to get a heads up on any potential sales. I don't know how it compares to some of the ones on Amazon. I linked the ones on Amazon just because, again, I love Amazon. Um, just so you can kind of see some examples. So, you know, I mean, I think that they're rated decent too. Okay, so now I have my waistband. I've pinned it. Um, what's really important here is that those grommets be smack dab in the center. So I like to put a pin right between those grommets because if they're not, if they're offset on your waistband, that's gonna be obvious. So there are a couple ways to do this. Some people like to sew before attaching it to sew the casing because what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a line of stitching here. Above it, you're gonna thread through some elastic. Below it, you're gonna have your grommets and your drawstring. It's the elastic that holds these pants up. It is not the drawstring. The drawstring, is a really fun feature. Um, it's kept me from being pantsed by my kids occasionally, but it is not, you know, the main thing that's holding it up. That would be the elastic. So that pin that I placed right dead center between those grommets is gonna go at that front crotch seam. So that's one of the reasons why that's so important. And I'm actually gonna put two pins there because nothing is more irritating than surging on your waistband and finding that it doesn't line up. And then that center back seam is going to go along the center back of your shorts to line up. So again, I just peek there. I put a pin through at about 3 8 I kind of peel it back a little bit. I check and make sure that those are gonna line up and that that line is gonna be the same. It's those little touches that I think kind of make your handmade garments look better than something that comes from China. Um, so then... Do you want to close the tab make sure our internet is working well? Okay. Is anyone having trouble seeing me? Hopefully you guys are all able to see this. Are we doing okay? Is the video going all right? Can you see the comments there, honey? Looks okay on my phone. Okay. So hopefully... Sir, can I see that comment? Okay, for the yoga hack, is there a magic math equation to make sure it fits good? Um, I would say the magic math equation is getting some fabric and holding it around your waist. It's the right, you know, snugness. Um, I tend to use about 80%. So, you know, I mean, it's not really, these, these pants don't hit where you think of as your waist. If you look at mine, and I'll show you my belly button here for the sake of uh, fitting, they hit, you know, I don't know, this far below my belly button. I don't know what that is. Like, let's say like two, two and a half inches below my belly button is where I like them to sit. So what I would do would be to create, you know, a band of fabric that's, I think Joni in her blog post recommends 10 inches tall um, for the yoga waistband hack. And then hold that around yourself and see, you know, because you're not going to have any elastic in the yoga waistband. So you need to make sure that it's, you know, snug enough that they're not going to fall down. So I would, you know, measure around yourself, do it that way, or take the measurement with a measuring tape of where you want it to sit and take and use about 80% of that measurement plus some seam allowances. So that's what I would do. I don't know if it's really a magic math equation, um, you know, but that's, that's how I would do it. So, and that hack is on the Green Style blog. So that hack is on, you know, greenstylecreations.com. Um, you can find that one. All right, so here's another little tip for you, back to our regular waistband. It's just, again, for a nice finish, make sure that your side seams are pressed toward the back. That just makes it kind of sit nicer. So you can see where it's nice that we basted our, our pocket together at the top here, because that way when I pull it to stretch it, it doesn't get kind of off there. So I just like to do this. You can officially quarter it if you want to. 
um, but I just like to kind of stretch it and then pinch it the side seams and then just kind of double check and make sure that that stretch is pretty much even you know that you don't have too much stretch in the front or too much stretch in the back making sure again that my waistband and my center back seam are lining up well it's looking pretty good you don't have to stretch this waistband a lot you know when I was making the Portlander shorts different company um, I had to stretch the heck out of that waistband because that one doesn't have any elastic in it and so it really needs to be snug. Um, this one's going to have elastic. You don't have to do a ridiculous amount of stretching. Um, so if you're trying to think about, oh, is this fabric good for a waistband? You know, I would say as long as it has that recommended 25% stretch that the pattern recommends, you'll be good to go. Okay, so let's go back over to the serger. It's enough gapping. Um, now, you're not going to serge all the way around. Don't make that mistake. I've done that. Um, what you are gonna do is you're gonna leave like a one to two inch gap so that you can insert the elastic. So what you, I would not recommend doing is making a lot, your tendency might be, oh, I'll leave that gap right at the center back. Well, then it makes it really hard to get that center back seam lined up. I like to leave my gap slightly off to the side. So I'm gonna go this, and you can put a pin in where you wanna stop surging if that's helpful for you. So, make sure my layers lined up. Alright. Again, as I do this, you just make sure that all the layers are properly lined up. Distribute that stretch evenly as I go. Make sure that that waistband or that side seam is pressed toward the back, which it was trying to sneak toward the front. This is where we're surging now on the front. So you're getting the pockets in there. Okay, so. Your knife. So Jeannie is saying, I have a problem surging around. My knife cuts my fabric. My knife is cutting my fabric. Um, not sure what you mean by that, Jeannie. Can you clarify what you mean? Um, so I've got, again, this is where it's really important. I'm trying to keep those two grommets right in the middle. So I can kind of peek, make sure that they're where I want them to be. The grommets are far enough down that it should not interfere with your surging. She means it cuts into her fabric when she's done. Okay. So I'll try to show you how I, I finish that off. Um, at first, we're not going to go all the way around. I'll show you what I do. I again, want to make sure that side seam is pressed toward the back. Okay, so this is where I started, okay? So I'm going to make sure to leave a gap. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to slowly move my fabric off toward here, and I'm going to veer off this way. And when I come back to sew my little gap closed, um, I'm just going to line it up with the nearest straight part, and then I'm going to serge right across there. If you don't get it quite right, you can always go and kind of correct it with a sewing machine. All right, so I've got my center back. This fabric makes it really hard to tell. I'm sorry. I've got my center back uh, waistband seam and pants seam that I'm matching up there that I don't have to worry about. Oh, good. Okay, hope for the best with the uh, grommets. They look like they're fairly evenly spaced. Um, on either side of the center front, so that's great. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to the sewing machine because we need to stitch that line on the pattern where it showed the, the casing line. And again, we're not gonna stitch all the way around, just as we did with the waistband. 
and we measured it, that we were gonna do about one and a quarter inches down. Or one, is it one and a quarter or one and a half? Let's double check. Okay, so we've surged off some. Um, so I think we take off three, one, two, three, eights. It should be just about an inch. Okay, so then I'm gonna come over to my sewing machine. Um, now I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna use a stitch length of three millimeters. I'm gonna show this. I'm gonna use a stitch length of three millimeters, and I am gonna back, back stitch now, but this is a slightly longer, usually if I was sewing a seam, it would be 2.5. I'm gonna make it three millimeters. <laughs> oh, Kathy, I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> I've done that too. Um, so I'm gonna start right where I left off with my serging. I'm gonna make sure that, that my needle is gonna hit at about one inch, so I need to move it over a little bit. Okay, I have kind of a guideline here. Okay, so the reason that this is important is because when you go to insert your elastic, you're gonna be in trouble if your, your casing is not big enough for the elastic. Okay, now the other thing, okay, so I think that that's where I want it, right about where that three is on my machine. The other thing you wanna do is if you've got grommets in there, you're gonna make sure that if that's where you're doing it, you're not right on top of a grommet. Okay, so if I stitch right next to that, where that three is, I'm gonna be right on top of a grommet. That's bad news bears, you don't wanna sew over a grommet. So you can make sure that your, just your needle is just a little bit you know, gonna be right there to the side of the grommet. You can also use a zipper foot here. Um, sometimes that's helpful. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notice, okay, here's a line on my machine right here for the one, that's where I'm gonna line it up. So that's how I do it. So I'm gonna line that up here with where my surging hole is because you want the hole for the elastic to be in that same spot. There's my one that I'm just going slightly over. Okay, so now I'm gonna start stitching it. This is my casing that I'm making here. Right, so Megan's correct. So it should be, you know, just down like a little bit over one to fit the one inch elastic. Um, now, if you've, you know, are made any tiny little error on where you put your grommets, um, that's not gonna work for you. So I would just always recommend double checking where your grommets are. Um, and making sure that that's gonna work for you um, to fit that elastic. Honestly, I have been using, um, I've been using three quarter inch elastic because I have a lot of it. Um, and that works fine too, it's, it's not, uh, you can make some alterations like that, it's not gonna hurt it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching here. Try to keep it even as I go along. anything in there that doesn't need to be in there. Okay, so I'm going to slow down a little bit in my grommet. Make sure that I've got enough room. I kind of push it under a little bit. Make sure I'm not sewing on the grommet, but that I'm going not kind of veering up and over it either. You don't want that. Again, you can switch to a zipper foot if you want to. I don't like how the zipper foot feeds the fabric quite as much, so I don't usually do that unless I have to. Don't sew over your finger. I've done that. It hurts. No, this is not a stretch stitch. Um, so this is a longer straight stitch. This I'm using a, a three millimeter straight stitch um, when I'm inserting or making this casing. Um, 
So that is something important to note. I could use a stretch stitch, but it wouldn't look as nice, um, in my opinion. Now you could also use a cover stitch, or if you have one, like a chain stitch, that would look fine on the outside. But I don't use a stretch stitch there. So I'm gonna end my stitching right where that hole is from my serving. stitch there so we're not going to finish that opening until after we've inserted our elastic oh, it's kind of hard to see on this fabric because like my thread matches so well okay so now what do we do we got to insert our elastic okay so here's my elastic and i'm going to get my good old safety pin um, now, you want to make sure you measure your elastic. The elastic measurement chart, I think, is on page six of the pattern. Um, so you're going to have to flip back to the beginning. I like to use my grid here to measure. So for my size, I'm making my elastic about 25 and a half inches. Cut it there. And then I'm going to go back over. Sorry if you're going to there. <laughs> Put my safety pin through. This is probably my least favorite part. So you have that hole that you left. You stick it up in there. And you're going to make sure the most important part of this is just to make sure that it doesn't get twisted. We don't want twisty elastic. That's not comfy. So we're going to push it through there. as it goes. After you're done threading the elastic, you can also stitch in the ditch um, at the side seams. And what that means is you can stitch, you look at the side seam here, or the center back seam, either way you can stitch right on top of, kind of in the ditch between your previous stitching, and that will keep the elastic from rolling there for sure. So if you're having any trouble with your elastic rolling and twisting on you, I have a wet pair of ready to wear jeans that does that. Well, they're not really jeans, I guess, if they have elastic, but <laughs> they're my kind of jeans. That's the kind of jeans I like, is, is the ones with elastic in the waist, so you can eat a few extra cookies. Um, so you can do that. So I'm just continuing to thread it through. This is something where you can also measure this elastic around your waist. There are some suggestions in the pattern, but um, you know this, this is mostly that I would make the shorts based on your hip measurement and then adjust the elastic in the waist to your comfort zone. Measure elastic stretch, not stretched for sure. Um, in terms of the pattern measurement. So if she says, you know, that you need 30 inches of elastic, that's 30 inches of not stretched elastic. If you're measuring yourself, like just on your body about, you know, how you like it to sit and you're saying, okay, you know, you, that should be stretched because that's how it's going to be in the end. So if I'm just kind of going by feel and I'm saying, okay, this is about, you know, the snugness that I would need to keep my pants from falling down. Okay, there's my measurement. That In that way, you are stretching if you're doing it with that method. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so find my safety pin here. Like I said, not my favorite part. Okay, don't pull your elastic all the way through. You'll be sad, sad, sad if you do that. Um, and just kind of work it down. want to pull it anymore because I don't want it to come out. Okay, so then I, I push it down through that hole. So there's my safety pin. Here it is. You could safety pin the two ends together to the fabric and try them on at this point. I'm not going to do that in front of you, obviously, and I know these fit at this point. <laughs> Steven says something weird. Um, now, the key here, so what you're going to do is you're going to zigzag them together. The key here is to make sure that you're doing that in a way that you're not twisting them as you go. So I kind of pull them apart. I feel that. I go, okay, they need to overlap like this. And then I really tug. Um, and I overlap them a bit. And then I go back over to my sewing machine. I like to zigzag in a square. I 
feel that that makes it extra secure. So I'm gonna start on one side, and now I switched over to a zigzag stitch. Can you show them what this looks like in my machine? No. Um, so I'm switching back over to this wide zigzag stitch. And then going to the edge of that elastic, lift up, turn around. Okay, turn around again. And then lift up, turn around again. Now I have an elastic rectangle. Okay, you can surge over that again if you want to. If you really are concerned about that, you can always surge again, but I think it's, or not surge, I'm sorry, zigzag. I think that that's pretty darn secure there. So I'm gonna come back over, clip my threads, of course. Okay, so, but the way I did it in that rectangle also just make sure that you don't have like flaps of elastic. If you have any flaps, you're gonna wanna sew them down. So now I pull it back through, double check to make sure that you've got nothing that is twisted in there and I'm good to go. So now I'm gonna flip the waistband back down and now I'm gonna surge over this spot that I left open. So we're done with the elastic, now we can surge it. You don't have a serger, you're going to use your stretch stitch, that lightning bolt stitch that's here, and you're going to just stitch over that spot. So I'm going to line it up here with the nearest kind of straight area and the edge and the seam allowance that I've got. Kind of you're stretching it slightly. I veered off and now it's mostly a smooth line if this was kind of pointed kind of went up and down anyway I'd just go over that with the sewing machine with the stretch stitch um, but I think it, it went pretty well there okay so again you could decide to go back and top stitch it now to the waistband that is something I did like I said on my denim pair but I'm not doing that on this pair now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine we're so gonna go questions about your equation 80% Questions? Is it 80% of the original band size? So that 80% was in reference to the yoga waistband. You want to go over this? the band size again? Or? So this is not the yoga waistband though. This is a, the regular waistband per the pattern. So this one I'm just using the estimates in the pattern. I'm just using the pattern pieces. Um, if you have, I'll go back through the comments and, and look right. at that, take a closer look at that. Um, I'm going to go back to my three millimeter length stitch and stitch that casing closed because we stitched the serge closed. Now I'm going to do this from the right side. Kind of hard to see in mine, but okay. now I'm going to just okay. back stitch there. You're just going through over that tiny part that you left open. Okay, now I'm going to show you the stitch in the ditch technique just because I find it useful and maybe it'll be useful to you too. Okay, so you've got your elastic in there, but what if it likes to roll? Well, I'm going to eliminate that. I'm going to make sure the stretch is evenly distributed because once you do this, you're not going to be able to move the elastic all around anymore. I'm going to go to that center back seam and I'm going to stitch right through the fabric, both layers of the fabric and the elastic right there in that ditch. If you do it right in the ditch, you're not even going to be able to see it, really. The sewing machine needs a little encouragement, so just right stopping where that waist hand elastic is. Okay, so now it's really discouraged from rolling in there. Okay, that's, that's going to help with the rolling. Okay, so hooray, now I have a waistband. Now it's time to do your drawstring. Okay, I like to cheat a little bit when it comes to my drawstring. Um, let's see. Where did I? I just, oh, there it is. All right. What do you guys think? I use twill tape, half inch twill tape. It's easy, it's fast, it works for me. Sometimes a nice standard drawstring looks really nice. I'm gonna go with the black color. Um, so again, 
you're going to do this. If you wanted to do a standard drawstring, you would just make your own drawstring, make a long skinny tube of fabric, feed it through. There's a really good blog tutorial on that at uh, stitchingatnight.com, which is another, not my blog, but my friend's blog. Um, so you could check that out if you want to make your own drawstring and you don't know how. I don't usually measure this. Um, I just start feeding it in there through that grommet hole all the way around, pulling it through as I go, just like you did for the elastic. This is why if you're stitching in the ditch for that elastic, you only go as far as the elastic. If you stitched all the way down, you would no longer be able to feed your drawstring through. So we got this going on. Do you have any more questions I can answer while I'm doing this part? Anybody's asked? Do you guys have any questions so far? We've had some people sewing along with us that have been beginners and that's been so exciting for me to see. Super rewarding. So if you have any questions, definitely ask. Would three quarter inch tool fit be too bulky? No, I don't think so. Um, this casing is pretty wide the way that it's, you know, sewn. So if you measured it, you know, mine is about an inch. So I think three quarter inch should be totally fine too. Um, you can buy it on Amazon. I bought mine at twilltape.com. They had a special at one point. I find that just the black and the natural is good. I don't find that I need like exactly that same color, or if I do, then I'm gonna to wanna to make my own drawstring. Okay, so all the way around, back through. Now this stuff does fray. Tool tape definitely frays. So I'm gonna feed it through. I find that like a good length is usually about the same as my shorts so that I have enough room to tie a good bow and then you're going to want to use some fray check or something that does the same job as spray check uh, along those edges because like I said it, it definitely frays and if you don't do that you're going to put it through the washer and it's going to be a frayed mess. Um, let me fray check don't this get stuck a little bit there. Sometimes I need to poke a little hole in it just to remind it how to come out. There we go. And just a little dab of fray check along that edge. And then you can also tie a knot to keep it from coming through your grommets. But you can see how that seven millimeter is a good, you know, width for this half inch drawstring. So, okay, so we've got that down. Um, now we're gonna go through, now all we have to do is hem it. So we're almost there. Probably sick of watching me by now. A um, couple things for hemming. I like to trim these little serger tails, thread tails, before I go. Um, and then for hemming it, you can, you know, press it. And I, I'm going to try to do that. This fabric, like I said, doesn't love being pressed, but I'm going to go ahead and give that a shot. Um, there is a one inch hem allowance in this pattern. I would, if this is your first pair, surely recommend trying them on and seeing do you want to use that full inch? Do you want to use more than an inch? Um, you know, just to kind of see. But I'm going to go back over here. Got my seam gauge. Another way that I like to measure out the hemline is by running a basting stitch along the edge at one inch. Um, but I just kind of check it once and then I eyeball the rest of it. trick if you are just using a sewing machine and you're not well really either way um, I use it in my serger too but um, you can fill your bobbin in your sewing machine or the loopers in your serger um, with maxi lock stretch um, 
also works for a cover stitch machine. And man, I didn't think that it was really any different than woolly nylon. And I bought some maxi lock stretch. It's not cheap. You can buy it at Wawak or Amazon. But man, my serger just started purring when I did that. I'm not kidding. It was just like, ah. So I'm a big believer in maxi lock stretch. And you can fill your bobbin with it um, for a stretch of your hem. If you're doing like a twin needle hem or whatnot. So, okay, double checking my, oops, my hem allowance here. Looks good. I'm gonna hem on my cover stitch machine. That's one time when it doesn't usually get too cranky, although it knows it's being watched, so hopefully it'll do all right. And over here, line it up. I like to start on the back because that way any overlap is not super obvious. Um, and then, just go. Just go. You can see that it took that hem just that press just well enough for me to see. but a basting stitch would be good too. And the goal if you're doing a cover stitch is to get the stitching right on the edge of your fabric. That's always the goal, like I said. Sometimes, sometimes I achieve it better than others. Go over it just a little bit over where I started, and then you can stay over there. I'm gonna get a tool and come right back. I use my surgical seam ripper, love this thing. This is how I finish a cover stitched hem. So I use my surgical seam ripper to grab those two needle threads, pull them toward the front. I want to make sure you don't cut them right off right there, but and then I pull my fabric whoop, to the back. That knots it on the back nicely. You can always double knot it just to secure it. And then I'm gonna move on to the other leg. Okay, make sure that I'm starting on the back again. I think it looks nicer that way. questions or anything that I need to answer? Can we use a piece of elastic? Can you use what? A piece of elastic as tall as the waist band and can with the drawstring, the reception of casting. Okay, can I see the, okay. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need to take a look at your question exactly so that I understand what, what we're talking. A piece of elastic. Okay, so you could definitely use a piece of elastic, like a wide piece of elastic instead of a drawstring um, if you wanted to. I'll show you, I was actually gonna do this and I ran out of time. So, I have some really wide elastic, like this. Um, and if you wanted to serge it to the pants with no waistband, you certainly could. It wouldn't have a drawstring, though. Um, I'm not sure is that, if that's what you're referring to. I even have this, like, three-inch wide. You could definitely do that instead. It would just change the look of it a little bit. Um, but I, I can't picture how that would look if you had the drawstring as well. So I don't know, you can elaborate on that if, I, if I'm missing something.
You can go and clip all those threads and tie them off if you wanted to. Um, but that's it. You have a great pair of shorts and now you can go and make one for every day of the week and now I have made one for every day of the week. I hope nobody notices I'm wearing the same pants every day. So thank you so much for sewing along with me. Um, yeah, I will definitely hold them up. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I really appreciate it. Um, you check out the other hacks um, you know, that I that I've posted. There's jean, jean shorts hack, the more traditional you know, folded in pocket hack. Um, I made the lace shorts. So, so there's a lace shorts hack where you're eliminating the pockets entirely and making one full um, front and back piece. Um, so there's that hack as well. Um, so there's, and I might even, you know, post a couple more as I have time, a couple of pattern tests going on now that are distracting me, but, um, yeah, so that's, these are the, here you go. You can see what those look like. I still need to cut some of those threads, but from the front and the back, um, now that the drawstring casing has dried, tie a cute little bow there. You can knot these just so they don't go through at all. Okay. So um, I am going to really appreciate you hanging in there with me um, for my first live sew along. I'm going to draw a winner for a fabric gift card based on you know the um, sewing along tonight. And then there's going to be another winner that I'm not going to draw until Monday in the actual sew along event. So if you haven't been sewing along um, in the event with me, um, and you want to get in on that prize too, or that, that potential prize, um, Every time you enter a photo underneath the album, um, the albums are easiest to see on mobile. They're up at the top, um, but you can scroll down and eventually find them on a desktop version too. Um, but every time you enter, you know, progress, so day one pockets, day two, you know, et cetera, um, a progress pick, you're gonna be entered to win a prize of some green style patterns. So, um, and if you haven't picked up the pattern yet, there's a discount, an exclusive discount code in the event for 25% off. So, um, you know, definitely join the event. I'll, I'll post the link um, again on the main knit pop page so that you can see it. But um, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Sarah, for having me. And I hope you guys all have a great night.